Hey guys, I'm getting lots of questions lately about partnerships and how to structure them so that they're fair for both partners. So I'm going to use the easiest possible example that I can think of where you've got two partners where one is an investor and one is going to be working at your business, like a gym. Uh, we call that person the operating partner. So in this example, Bill and Ted's excellent partnership adventure, Bill is going to be the trainer, the coach, the operating partner, the coach, and Ted is an aficionado. He's a, he loves CrossFit, you know, he's a lawyer, he wants to help Bill out. His intentions are good, he's gonna lend him the money. So the first thing is, uh, if I'm Bill, I wanna ask, do I actually need a partner here? Uh, the gym ownership model is an owner-operator model, it's not an investment-grade asset, he's basically buying himself a job when he starts out. What he really needs is a loan, and so his first offer to Ted should really be, hey, I'll pay you 6% interest on this money that you're lending me, and that way, there's no confusion about who's actually in charge, and there's no debt hanging over Bill's head after a few years. If they do take a partnership, though, what they need to do is split revenue according to what's fair for the operating partner and the investor. What most people do is they'll start off by saying, okay, well, we're 50-50 partners. That means we're just gonna split the profits 50-50. But your pay strategy and your ownership strategy are actually two separate completely different things. You can be 50-50 partners without splitting profits 50-50. So Bill is going to be working full-time in the business. He's in the founder phase, which means he's gonna be working 60 to 70 hours a week. Ted is not going to be doing that. Ted's gonna go work at his law office and play golf, but he's got the money, so he's gonna get a 50% share. In a traditional model, what this would look like is this. You know, if you've got 10,000 in revenue coming in, okay, and their fixed costs, so their rents, their equipment loan, all that stuff might be about you know five grand a month. What's left over at the end is five thousand dollars. Okay, so they split it. So Bill gets twenty five hundred, Ted gets twenty five hundred, and they all go home happy. The problem is that while Bill is doing all the work to grow the business, to operate the business, and the business keeps taking on more more expenses. Bill's share doesn't grow proportionally to that. The best that he can ever do is take half of the profit. Now we all know that expenses always expand to fill completely the revenues that you generate. So that means as they get more and more clients, take on more and more costs, uh, Bill's earnings will actually like decrease in scope. He'll earn less money on each client that comes through the door. What's more fair is to write Bill in as uh, a staff person to pay him a salary above the line here. Okay, so maybe he gets a salary of $3,000 per month and then split the profits. So this profit now becomes $2,000 per month based on that math and they're only splitting 1,000. But now Ted is paid on pure real profit instead of profit plus Bill's you know, back-breaking labor. Bill is actually making a little bit more every month. He, now he's taking three thousand as a salary for being the managing partner and a thousand in profit. Ted is still reaping a pretty good reward on his initial investment, but both partners are making sure that Bill can afford to keep doing this job long term. That he's not like choking himself out uh, through starvation. So the thing to keep in mind if you're looking at having a partnership and you're adamant that you want a partner is to separate out what your equity in the company is, the shares you hold, from the way that you're going to get paid. They're two different things, they don't have to both follow along the same lines.